Now, one of the biggest tech stories at the moment is the price of RAM. Now, RAM is going through the roof. It's about 500% or something like it, higher than it was, say, I don't know, a year ago from some places. Maybe it's cheaper from others. Maybe the suppliers are taking the hit for the time being. But it's been projected that this is going to last for the next, say, two years and maybe longer because of AI, right? So all these companies like Microsoft and Meta and OpenAI and X are all buying up all this RAM for their AI models or their, you know, AI machines to run these large language models, etc., etc. You just look into the stories. There's so many about it. It's not even just tech news. It's sort of general news. And this is going to affect just about every computer going, let alone if you're just buying the RAM normally. Now, you might be wondering why I'm talking about this. Maybe I'm probably not the person to care. However, I did come across an article about it that was probably some of the most brain dead commentary on it ever. OK, so uh, there was a, a tech story about the price of RAM. And this particular commentator who was quoted on this said some of the worst advice ever or some of the worst comments ever. So the first comment they said was consumers, which is cringe to begin with, just talking about people as consumers, will probably have to accept lower performance computers for the time being. But mainly they can't afford to upgrade or if they don't want to spend the money on upgrading RAM or buying a new computer, right? So let's address that first one straight away. Now, being that it's a Linux channel, there's an obvious solution to this. Install Linux. There you go. I've just given you free RAM. I've given you free RAM. I've just actually saved you a whole load of RAM. Because, of course, most of these tech articles are talking in the context of you're probably using Windows. Because although the Linux desktop is, you know, increasing here and there, it's up to like 5%. You know, we're talking Windows 11 and still 10, sadly, are, you know, the majority market share and then Mac as well. So if you think about it straight away, I can just save you hundreds of dollars on either a brand new computer or, in fact, upgrading RAM straight away. Even if you can get into that soldered laptop that's all soldered together to upgrade your RAM, even easier. Just take my advice, ditch Windows 11 and install Linux, okay? Straight away, I've just saved you hundreds of dollars. I've just made your life so much better and easier because it goes on to really like the second point, okay? So the second point in this article was, um, the other thing is that you just have to um, accept like lower performance, right? Because if you think about the whole reason to upgrade RAM, Generally, the whole reason to buy a new computer is the performance of your computer. And if you are anybody who's used a Windows system or probably, and actually, no, I know this for a fact, a Mac system for any serious length of time, a few years, that machine is depreciating like nothing. It's hemorrhaging its performance because of these terrible operating systems and their abysmal updates. So, for example, you know, Windows 11 is one of the worst examples of this, right? Everybody knows that Windows 11 is now all AI garbage. How ironic, right? Or how fitting for it. And spyware, tracking, having to log into garbage Microsoft Live accounts. And it's no really any better for Mac, OK? And, of course, this is deliberate strategy by technology companies because don't forget every computer pretty much laptop or pc is going to be licensed with with a windows key a windows 11 key a windows 11 you know distribution that you know is paid for right and it's no again no coincidence that windows 10 which worked on in theory just about everything good performance or not there wasn't really any tangible restrictions windows 11 of course is one of the most restricted operating systems on the planet now. You know, any computer older than just a handful of years, incredibly, will not run on it. 
in the official way. Now there are ways around it, but so here's the here's the point. Again, what's the answer to this? The obvious answer is obvious, right? Install Linux. So point two, install Linux as well, because apart from saving the RAM in the first place, you're going to get a huge performance increase, a huge performance increase. Even if you have the worst Linux distribution replacing Windows 11, that thing is nowhere close to what resources Windows just idles at. The performance of Windows is terrible. The user interfaces, I mean, a React, what, a React app is basically what's used to do the start bar. You know, web, web, um, designing tools, or how to put it, what's they call it? You know, React is a web framework, right? Is that right? I think it is. I never waste my time in this garbage. It's clearly not suitable or appropriate for the start menu in Windows, right? But that's what it is. And I've seen it first time my wife uses, obviously, a, um, a Microsoft laptop, you know, just the file explorer. I mean, Microsoft recently explained that everything's broken on it anyway. They don't seem to be ashamed of this. They don't seem to be ashamed of it. So again, the answer is just install Linux, okay? You'll get an instant performance boost. Your CPU will not be idling. It will be much more performant anyway. None of, basically, you know, almost no Linux software I can think of or situation when using Linux software is ever as bad as running a Windows operating system and trying to do anything, particularly Windows native, even like a file explorer, it's crazy. So, and they've admitted everything's broken. So, you know, again, I'm just saving you loads of money and giving you just a basic experience that's a thousand times better, okay? If you didn't ever need another excuse to replace Windows with Linux, do it now. But if you're a Linux user, you might be sat there thinking, well, hang on a minute, I'm already using Linux, but I need more RAM, I need more performance. Well, okay. So the obvious thing is that people playing games, okay, you need that extra RAM to run whatever. But if you think like the people I just talked about, you know, Windows users, I've already saved you like two gigs of RAM straight away plus maybe three to four on any Linux desktop compared to Windows. Now, if you are therefore already on a Linux system, I'm going to save you even more because really, if you've used Linux for any real amount of time, you should start to know enough about how Linux works. And really, the real issue here is your desktop environment. So if you're running KDE, GNOME, Cosmic, or some other desktop environment, now I'm going to save you another two plus gigabytes of uh, RAM, okay? Use a window manager, okay? Use i3, use Hyperland even, use whatever. You know, you've even got distributions like Omarchi, which I'm not necessarily a huge fan of. But you can install easily, okay? It's not a difficult thing to install. And, you know, you'll learn this stuff pretty quickly anyway. Use it, it, you know, there's a whole web page of Omarki where it teaches you how to use it. So just do that, okay? Don't fall for the nonsense of using Cosmic because it gives you tiling. You want a proper tiling window manager. That's how you're going to save gigabytes of resources. So imagine this. Imagine if you've just left Windows 11, okay? And you've installed, say... Um, i3 window manager on you know some Linux system like Artix even you know you can just install that out of the box and it will do the automatic setup you know I've just I've saved you six seven gigs probably idling RAM now you can play you know your games to your heart's content and I've saved you hundreds of dollars and I've given you a hundred times more performant and happier computer experience okay so you, you know instead of going out and spending that money on ram you can just send it to me yeah just send it to me look look in the description it's easy you know you just how to send half of it to me and use the other half on a holiday you know it's really that simple you know i should be doing consumer advice at this moment so yeah don't buy new ram don't waste your money unless you really have to i assume you don't that's my assumption and i think i'm going to be like 90 percent right here like 90% of you aren't going to need to upgrade RAM for the next couple of years unironically I use a 20 year old ThinkPad right it's even 32 bit of two gigabytes of DDR2 RAM do you know how much RAM I idle at under 100 megabytes unironically and it's still a modern desktop uh, well has a modern desktop functionality now if we're talking like 64 bit obviously of course I've got two 64 bit laptops which idle about 100 120 meg 
okay, even running i3 window manager. And one of them has eight gigs of DDR2, you know, old RAM, and the other has four. And you know what? I have abundance of RAM. I can run a modern web browser. Yes, I don't play games, but games are cringe, okay? You know, so I'm never going to endorse games. You know, RAM discussions and games are never sufficient because RAM is eaten up by games all the time and people upgrade. So you're probably not even in this conversation. But if you are, I've already saved you a load. So, hey, I've already done you a favor. So if you, even if you needed another six or seven gigs, I've probably given that to you. Because, then you, you know, this is the other thing. If you're using Windows or whatever and, you know, you're already idling at six or so plus gigs and you're running Steam or whatever, of course, then you're going into your swap. I assume games use uh, swap memory you know, which is your hard drive, which is slower. So now, you know, you've got that extra fast, you know, RAM anyway, you know. So, look, I've just given you a huge performance increase, a huge performance increase. Anyway, I digress a bit there. Um, so the other thing with that article as well was, I just didn't like the way they talked about people as consumers, and I didn't like as well, one of the comments was like, Computers are an everyday item. Laptops and computers are an everyday item. Like it's a piece of food. You use it for one day and throw it away. Now, yes, technically, you know, ubiquity of manufacturing has meant that, you know, laptops and computers, but they're not an everyday item, right? You know, that's not how you should think. That's just crazy. And again, it just speaks to the attitude. This attitude is why software is so bad. This is why Microsoft Windows is so bad. This is why Mac OS is so bad. It's because the attitude is that it's so disposable that you are willing to suffer anything and everything to buy in a year's time a new phone or a new computer or laptop. Don't do it. Don't do it. Use my consumer advice and then the spare money you can send to me. Remember in the description, I'm only joking. You can keep your money, have a nice holiday, whatever you want to do. So, um, yeah, I just thought I wanted to comment that, you know, you can do one of the easiest and cheapest things, you know, basically Linux is free RAM, okay? That's basically what it adds up to. So, um, yeah, I think, I think I'll leave it there. I think that I've made my point. I've made my point. So, um, you know what to do with the fake YouTube? You can like, comment, subscribe. And I'd like to give special thanks to my patrons. So that's Sean, that's HTX80 Nerd, and that is Soul. Thank you guys very much, and uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one.